Do you remember the Ugandan Knuckles meme? You do not know the way. Yes, I do. do you know the way? If you're watching this video in February of 2018, the answer is probably yes. If you're watching this video almost any time after that, Uganda Knuckles is probably a distant memory that you can barely recall. The death of the Uganda Knuckles meme in such a short period of time is a symptom of the ever-shrinking half-life of memes. I present to you... I'm going to highlight different phases of memes throughout the past two decades. Internet memes have been around for 20 years. Alright, okay. 1998. Memes sucked. The first memes were simple and dumb. They were barely memes. Hey, here's a website with some GIFs of hamsters on it. Go there. That's it. Now we're going over to 2000 to 2002. This is the early adopters era. So in the days of yore, a meme could last seemingly forever. And they weren't so malleable in the past either. Before photoshopping stuff became commonplace, people would take memes as they came and use them raw. People would just post a comment that just contained a screenshot of something like All your base are belong to us with absolutely zero edits made to the presentation. And that would be considered a complete and worthy addition to a discussion. Early memes were just an inside joke. Deviation from the norm of said inside joke was spotty at best due to the already obscure nature of early memes. Nowadays when a video comes out it gets parodied and remixed to death in like an hour. 2003 to 2005, we finally get some inklings of creativity. One of the first memes to virally infect conversations on a wider internet scale was O'Reilly Owls. O'Reilly Owls were popular internet forums because no matter what the subject matter of the conversation was, you could just plop an O'Reilly Owl in there and people wouldn't question it. Since O'Reilly Owls were so common and Microsoft Paint came pre-installed on PCs, people made basic photo edits to decorate the owls with silly hats, different texts, whatever. Moving on to 2006 and 2009, the O oh, exploitable era. As people got braver and more creative, we saw the age of exploitable memes begin. So, exploitables were anything that you could quickly and easily edit to fit a topic or discussion. YTMND, or You're the Man Now Dog, let users combine a GIF with an audio clip that just looped forever. It was niche, but it dominated the internet for a brief period of time due to the amount of time it took to make a YTMND site. The late 2000s powerhouse meme format of top text, bottom text also saw its first beginnings with the advent of advice animals, a type of meme that would pave the way for bigger and better things in the future. It was an era completely defined by the variants possible within those memes, so you could make your own because it's so easy. Moving on to 2009, uh, and that general 2009 to 2011 era, this is where we start to see FML, aka Fuck My Life, and lolcats, as well as demotivationals and such. FML was a website where people would post stories of, wow, this happened to me, fuck my life. Also lolcats, which were just pictures of cats saying stupid, cute things, like I can has cheeseburger. These were so mainstream that they were funny to normies. Normies started liking memes, whereas back in the day you'd go like to see the hamster website and they'd be like what the fuck are you And now we're gonna go a little forward in time to 2012 or so, which is where you get rage comics and meme generators. Rage comics or things like F712U were like They're sort of a evolution of exploitables. You have a basic template and you fill it out and people can make their own. There's no real rules. You just do your own thing. Which meant the normies started making memes and that led to more mainstreamification. Normification, if you will, of memes. 2013. Harlem Shake. Lots of normies started making memes. 2014-ish and onward, like, I don't know, I haven't picked, nailed this down, but people just started to take memes into their own hands. Like, if something they wanted didn't exist, they would just make it and try to force it, and nobody would question it anymore. Like, it was just kind of whatever. You just It was like the Wild West. Memes were on Fox News. This is kind of where you start to see the decline of certain memes. Once they became normified, it was impossible to use them anymore, and their ironic value ceased to exist. April 2016. That boy. Normies didn't know what to do with this one at first, but widespread adoption came in record time. The normies accepted it even though they didn't even understand it, and the normal internet people just went along with it because they hoped to god the normies wouldn't adopt it. When they did, it was just kind of a what the fuck do we do now situation. And then not more than a month later, the next super meme, Harambe, came crashing into the internet and also mainstream media. Harambe was popular everywhere. Internet memes were cultural phenomena all of a sudden. There was no distinction between the two. Now you're wondering, hey, why are the memes coming so fast? The rest of the timeline was like years apart. Harambe and Dead Boy are one month apart. What gives? Well, the times are changing fast. Harambe was one of the last super memes to exist before 2017. The year shit got weird. Hey, 
Do you remember? Hold it. Catch me up. Szechuan teriyaki! Yeah. Oh my. Do you remember all those? Yeah, me neither, because you don't care anymore. Nobody cares. Memes are coming and going at such alarming rates that some memes are here and gone in a matter of days. Memes are so commonplace in media that even your mom and dad know what memes are. If you miss a whole month of memes, you technically never missed anything at all, because nobody else will remember what happened last month either. 2018. We are on the brink of disaster. We are only two months into 2018 and we've already burned through Ugandan knuckles and Tide Pods. Remember when I said that regular memes were coming and going in a matter of days in 2017? Yeah, try hours now. The kid that got a selfie with Justin Timberlake at this year's halftime show was a huge deal for all of six hours before people moved on to other things. Remember Left Shark? Remember how that meme lasted months? We're screwed, we're so screwed guys. Mainstream adoption of memes, or normification, has led to a change in the memosphere. If we leave it unchecked, the series of tubes that holds the internet together could unravel. You don't want the next generation to be a breed of super memers that only deal in highly unstable quasi-memes that require two-key authentication to access and erase themselves from your brain after your viewing. Thanks for sticking with me until the end. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one.